Hi everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going on a unique journey with this Felling Axe fighter into the depths of goblin caves and ruins, and even high roller ruins, as we try to make it as far as possible using a weapon that isn't necessarily the most common fighter weapon. But this is not the most common man. This is a man born of hardships and hard times. A man who's worked his entire life in the woods, chopping logs for lumber mills to supply the major city in his region. Like his father before him, this man is a true woodsman. And wielding the felling axe, he enters this dangerous world seeking retribution for himself and for all those who have suffered as he has. The rich noble families of the inner cities have posed attacks, attacks on all loggers and woodsmen. And so, many of these families have died off or been forced to move to inner cities in the slums. He is not willing to do so. He enters this goblin cave to support his town and his family, trying to pay that tax any way possible. He's doing whatever it takes to make the spelling axe not only chop down trees, but chop down any monsters or evil beings lurking in these dungeons. He's fully aware there's other individuals who also come here seeking treasure and knows what the consequences may be if he were to go face to face with some of these very, very strong and dangerous beings. So, Smelling Axe Fighter, we are running Second Wind and Adrenaline Rush. I feel like that is probably your best route to get a lot of damage with this Smelling Axe as quickly as possible. It's not going to be as, as damaging as it would be on a Barbarian. However, it can be quite fast. Smelling Axe has a very, very fast swing speed if you're hitting a target. And if you have Adrenaline Rush popped, it is even quicker. So, we're hoping some of that attack speed makes up for the loss of damage you get from not having incredibly high strength like a Barbarian. This Spelling Axe wielding human is called Fredrin, or Fred for short. Fred is also not too horrible with a bow. He has used to do a lot of hunting for his family, hunting jackrabbits and small game in the woods behind his humble abode. We hear something unusual for us down below, and as we're kind of chopping through these mobs as quickly as possible, we're trying to get a few little scraps of loot to get ourselves on our way. We hear a cave troll, or we think it's a cave troll, but it's actually the new boss, which is the Cyclops. Cyclops is not a boss I've even really witnessed in the flesh. It's not really a boss I want to be fighting with Felling Axe Fighter. At least, not yet. Perhaps in the future I will be skilled enough to do this. But breaking these, breaking these pots actually gives us two surgical kits, which is... I feel like it's a little unusual, but maybe that is the new normal with uh, some of the recent changes. And we noticed Cyclops actually killed a guy, and I'm very, very curious to see what exactly we're going to find. Sure enough, it looks like a base kit rogue or wizard. It's really hard to tell. But, um, yeah. That Cyclops is not an easy thing to defeat, and I think at some level it's almost impossible for certain bosses. We're gonna chop down a few more mobs and hopefully find some okay gear in some of these crates as we make our way to the Goblin Caves. As you all know, Goblin Caves is the quickest route to the ruins, which is exactly where this Falling Axe fighter feels like he would thrive. First, First, we have to deal with his wizard, who is also a coward, as he leaves quickly. I will say, I actually thought I had Sprint, because I've used Sprint for so long. It feels very strange to have something else other than Sprint in my ability slot. So, we used Sprint there, thinking we'd close the gap, but actually we were using Adrenaline Rush at sort of the wrong moment. I do really want to see this Falling Axe swing with Adrenaline Rush. I'm very, very eager to get into some engagements in this white geared lobby. We're gonna actually use this campfire, even though it is a very, very valuable quest item. Because I very much want to see how good or how bad, perhaps, this setup can be. Falling Axe recently changed to only negative 35 movement speed from, I think it was negative 40, which may seem like a small change. But 5 movement speed is actually. It's actually fairly noticeable. 
And you should be moving almost just as fast as a shield fighter. Or maybe even faster in some instances. So you are risking a little bit more armor or durability. As well as no way to really block any projectiles. But 35 movement speed is not horrible. We're very much hoping this will help us close the gap on this guy. Just tag him in the chest with an arrow. As we accidentally pull this mob. Dealing with this mob. This guy can hear the audible potion chug. We're going to force this situation. And of course, one of the most satisfying things in this game has to be felling axe to the dome. There's just nothing else quite like it. And we made it out with some decent loot here. Truthfully, I was kind of surprised to see this guy have so many blues. And with the recent changes to how much things are worth, blue gear is crazy valuable. I did one raid on this account and escaped with some green gear. And it was amazing how much loot I had. Like, incredible. This is my second run. We found a felling axe in my first run. And a couple of green items get you a decent start. A really decent start. A lot faster than it used to be. So, we're going to grab every blue item we can just to see basically the value of it. And that should pretty much fill our inventory. Fredrin's already doing a pretty good job of working towards paying that tax. This may be another opportunity to steal some loot or ruin another individual's day. However, he escapes into a portal above and beyond. Taking this very, very kindly placed portal. We're going to see just how much gear and money we made. We can purchase a few upgrades, even just some meds with what we've found. It's quite nice. Do not want to venture into the upper echelons of gear yet. We don't have enough green pieces and there's nothing really available from the vendors that's green to consider queuing into HR quite yet. But as you can tell, four pieces of just generally junk gear get you about 120 gold, which is pretty absurd. It is kind of crazy how quickly you can gear up now. Selling the rest of our collectibles, we're now sitting at a decent chunk of change in only two games. Literally two games, and here we are. So we're going to find some more find some more meds quickly, maybe some arrows from the merchants, and re-gear and head back into Goblin Caves to get a better feel for this felling axe. I really want to I want to see it work before I start jumping into runes consistently using a weapon I'm not really that familiar with. And Frederick's going to use his calloused, calloused hands to grab a hard hardwood shaft. And just to see just how quickly he can smash this thing into a target dummy. 65 is not a horrible figure with how quickly we can swing this weapon. On top of having a second win, this is very much a brawler setup where you're actually inviting the fight. And you want to be right on top of people. Jumping into this other Goblin Cage run, we get an interesting spawn. Not one I get all that often by this health shrine. It does lead you into a room and a room beyond where you can put pressure on a player quite early on. A little bit, it's a little bit annoying if you're the guy in the room beyond. You'll you'll recognize the room quite quickly, with the goblin camp or goblin tents. Do not like that room if I'm the person spawning there, as you just can't leave quickly. You have too many things to deal with. And of course, as we lurk around the corner, we do see there's a player here close by. But yeah, nothing was actually cleared at the end of this room, so I start to get a little curious if maybe there's a rogue hidden somewhere. Or what's actually going on here. Confuses me greatly, because I see cleared mobs. I don't see any goblins or anything took out a player, and there's no skeletons around here, so... I'll still be a player around here close. But sure enough, poor fighter's still in the spawn. We pop second wind, adrenaline rush, start going to work on this shield. Just like that. That hardwood shaft, clean, razor sharp felling axe just cleaves through the shield and the player's skull. And we get some small little upgrades. Small little upgrades. Very, very small, that's that's for sure. But we'll take them. Everything we can do to provide for our town and our family is necessary. Looking for scraps and crates, they are much better 
much better in HR. You get a lot of blue gear, and with the prices on stuff now, those things are amazing. It is kind of blowing my mind just how strong four or five crates can be. So get either gearing up or just making gold. It's quite quite wild, really. Not only that, we're gonna get some lion head chests in here. We do have an X or crossbow skelly to deal with. Sorry. We'll use um we'll use adrenaline rush because now we just basically use that whenever we like, and it is very very satisfying. Very satisfying to see that felling axe swing that quickly. Looking at this, we do get another blue weapon, so it's almost worth grabbing that magic staff, even though we will never never use it. Looking for anything left. Nothing too exciting, so we're going to move on. Find some bandages. Potion, and some other odds and ends in behind here as well, which seems like quite a bit of stuff. I'll likely drop that Hoonskull, even though the Hound Skull isn't a bad option. It gives you vigor. We're trying to keep things fairly light with this setup because you do basically need to be in their face to do any damage at all if you want to be PvPing. But, um, it is funny to see the plus three physical power on the Barbuda Helm. The issue is, the Hoonskull has like minus 20% headshot reduction, which is very, very nice, especially if you're fighting against any sort of range, pro range projectile class. You have the minus 10% innate if you're running a fighter that's you know, a little more level than mine currently, as we're using Weapon Mastery. 10%... 10% projectile reduction and 20% headshot reduction on top of your PDR means it is a significant amount of reduction to your headshot damage overall, just damage across the board. That is all done simply by equipping a decent helmet. In my opinion, helmets are one of the most important pieces of gear in the game. The other one would likely be boots, seeing how popular Lightfoot boots are. And that's what I'm wearing currently as we make our way through this dungeon quickly. Boots, any type of movement speed at all is amazing. Or headshot reduction. We see a guy actually died here, trying to do the old health shrine thing where you could hop on top of it and freely hit Skeleton Champion. That is not possible anymore. Rather than mess around with the Felling Axe versus that guy, we're just going to move on. I feel like there is a proper way to make use of that room, but uh, for the time being, we haven't quite learned it. And really, really don't need to waste your time if there's a ton of crates in the room beside you that you can loot. Finding green or blue gear of any sort is very, very valuable, and a lot of those crates also have decent collectibles. We hear a guy wielding a crossbow on the other side of this room, so we're going to test out just how good our crossbow, the recurve bow gameplay can be. Recurve bow is a item I've kind of fell in love with, and Fredrin is a very, very big fan of the recurve bow in the woods in his hometown. It's giving you enough, enough punching power to take down small game, but not being incredibly cumbersome to the point you can't take it with you on a long journey through the wilderness. Also, finding bowstrings for those long bows has become increasingly difficult as the local military has switched and become more and more a fan of crossbows, which is what we're fighting currently. Crossbow has some crazy punching power, and you can basically hip fire the thing. A really, really solid damage to armor, especially if you hit a headshot. So, we've softened this guy up with a recurve. Now, we're going to move in with our big boy felling axe. Chop into this guy's face repeatedly. Pretty much the most ideal fight you can be in with a Felling Axe, another fighter with a close range weapon pushing into your boundaries. It can deal some pretty solid damage with Adrenaline Rush Felling Axe. It is honestly surprising me every time I end up landing a kill with it. it feels quite nice. As long as you're hitting swings, we all know. There is a huge, huge delay in your second and third, whatever, second, third, whatever it may be, swing, if you miss your first one. It's quite punishing. While dealing with that fighter, we did hear, hear a player down below, and I heard a goblin mage, so definitely has to be someone close by. Fred is not going to wait around. He's here, taxes must be collected, 
And we sit another guy down with one brutal spelling axe cleave to the forehead. That thing, like I said earlier, so satisfying. I understand we're killing players in normal lobbies. It still brings joy to me every time I see that see that axe head land perfectly on a player's head hitbox. Fredrin is no joke with this axe. He has arms like iron rods and a grip strength that is pretty much unmatched wielding this felling axe and lumbering through the woods like a true woodsman. Chopping, cleaving, chopping, cleaving, and rolling logs. Something he does on the daily. Which requires incredibly ridiculous strength. But using this spelling axe is like a joke to him, and we actually spot a portal down below, and seeing how we pretty much filled our inventory, we're gonna leave with our goblin ear intact, and maybe loot a few odds and ends just to to see how successful we can be in just a few runs of goblin caves now. Even normal goblin caves feels like the gold is pretty incredible. You find a pair of green light foots, so we're gonna snatch those up in case we ever wanna make use of those in high roller. And then be on our way. Once again, Bowling Axe, Bowling Axe is a strange, very, very strange playstyle. It is very W key. Especially running Second Wind, Adrenaline Rush, you don't really have a gap closer. And you kind of want them to walk into you like that like that fighter did. Giving us ample opportunity to land as many headshots as possible. Hitting for 65 damage is no joke. Especially considering it is a white Helling Axe. And that number will only increase with any of our strength numbers we get from our gear or any of the gearing up we can do over the course of this permadeath. We are going to restock on some meds, sell that wizard staff. It actually netted us just over 30 gold, and now we have a bit of an interesting question. We are running Adrenaline Rush, which is basically reliant on getting in people's faces and hoping you can deal as much damage as possible. And then combine that with the Felling Axe's reach, Adrenaline Spike may not be a bad option. Because you are likely, like very, very likely, to be taking damage while you're dealing damage. So that proc at 40% may happen in almost every one of our engagements, and then we can hope that second wind will kind of keep us alive long enough to make the most of it. So I feel like it is a very, very valuable option early on, considering you don't have, you don't have a lot of other great options that are going to give you any sort of power spike on Belling Axe. There's no real dual wield or blocking. There's no real combo attack with it, and combo attack's kind of so minor. I feel like Adrenaline Spike is not a horrible, horrible decision. The other opportunity, or other potential pathway you could take is being a little bit more defensive. Taking projectile resistance, I like that also has a decent shout no matter what you're playing on Fighter Class. But we went with something a little more aggressive, try to make our way into the Ruins map with Adrenaline Rush. And Adrenaline Spike. So, this is Ruins, Solo, Fighter. Spelling Axe. Frederick knows this is a high risk, high reward type scenario. And truthfully, a lot of the money he already made would likely be enough for a while, but he's not the type of individual citizens and conscious and will let other rich nobles decide his fate. He's gonna go up there and get as much as possible for everyone he cares about. Put the world to his axe and see who wins. So, we're here in ruins, hoping to gear up quite a bit more. Also, get a feel for runes before we jump into a pretty interesting and exciting thing, which is runes HR. So, we do find some upgrades, or just some items that at least keep us somewhat interested. We'll move on. Dealing with shield skellies is quite nice. I'm going to act some chopper over their heads if you don't have server lag, which, from my understanding, has been happening quite a bit lately. Then quite quickly after looting this skeleton, we're going to take a quick little rest in the corner of the map. Get our HP back to full and not waste the potion. I am very, very interested to see how this Dulling Axe shakes down 1v1 or 1v2. Defeating this direwolf is quite a simple task for our adventurous and woodsman type fella, veteran. He sees these beasts quite often in the woods he roams and harvests lumber from. They're not really as intimidating as... It should be or would be for most other individuals. He actually finds them quite 
quite a calming experience. Reminds him of home. Did hear a mob aggro quite close by. So there's likely somebody somebody lurking in the shadows. We hear a few more footsteps just briefly. And this is the type of situation where you need to give yourself lots of ways out. Because buffed up fighter player combo can deal some pretty crazy damage for my current setup. You see a slayer fighter, looks like Maybe even a lantern or... Yeah, it looks like a rogue, I guess. Using rapier. Trying to feel him out with her bow a bit. He decides running is his option. And we're likely never going to catch this guy without having sprint. So he is pretty much free to just zoom through the map if we can't land a few arrows. He is likely to get away. Here and pop smoke once more, and that pretty much kills our chance to figure out where this guy went. It's also quite terrifying. We do not have a lot of HP. A decent rogue player can really juke in and out of a felling axe's range using rapier. So it isn't really the most opportune matchup. It can be very, very strong against newer players. But generally speaking, felling axe literally means I have to be touching their nose. And if you're a rogue player, you just do everything possible to not let that happen. If I get inside that circle and start swinging, it is pretty much game over for a player as squishy as a rogue or many other classes. Just as we're starting to forget the rogue, we find a cleric. That looks like a barbarian. We saw it briefly, but we need to make a way out of here quickly. Yes, barbarian. So this is when we finally get to test this rock hard shafted weapon against the might of a cleric and a barbarian. Using every throwable we can, it is now time to switch it up and get this shimmering blade to work. Popping second wind after that judgment, we now start to lean into this barbarian. Making sure we land every hit possible with this spelling axe and not break momentum. Dropping one cleric. And now I have to deal with this barbarian. We switch to our range option. I'm trying to tag him over the wall as he's fighting mobs. We are quite exactly one battle axe swing away from death, I would think. So we have to be quite careful here. And W keying into this guy may not be a best option. As he's fleeing through the door, he gets. Crap, it just as just as we look through the door, we get like pre-fired by a ranger. I don't know. It's very, very strange. He must have been trying to shoot the guy in the trap or just already had an arrow ready to go and just slung it anyway as he watched him topple over and end up catching us, dropping us even lower HP, which is not ideal. I don't have a lot of HP in this scenario already, and now we could potentially have a ranger team pushing us. Luckily for us, they did give us a bit of time, so we're gonna be able to bandage here. And also drop a campfire quickly to get our second win back. We do see a couple portals close by, and we could take those, but Frederick is here for the greater cause, and he's not going to take the easy way out of this. He wants to prove his worth with the Spelling Axe as much as he does want to save his town and his family from eviction via the city police. So we're going to go deeper, push ourselves to the limit with this weapon, just to see just how deep it will cut. Pulling a few mobs as we're trying to land a sneaky little arrow onto this archer. Leaves us in a bit of a vulnerable situation now without a door. And we take, take a little bit of mob damage, which is unfortunate. We're now in a bow off with a class that can wield the bow way better than you can. So it's very tricky, very, very tricky situation to be in. I know I do not want to close the gap seeing how the last guy we faced ended up perishing into a trap. Fairly likely this ranger has another one placed somewhere in that direction as he's been there for quite a while. So, we need to be careful here, play it slow, and maybe try to get some revenge on this guy later down the road once we can get closer with our beautiful, beautiful shiny axe. What's more, popping a bandage, we're starting to get pushed by zone. 
time is somewhat running out. We decide to deal with this mob the easy way. Axeman Skelly. Get our bow out. First, we're going to do a quick little check to see if, if there's any more value we can gain from hanging around on the left over here. Love to hit a few arrows on a ranger. Just as we're about to. He just, just as we're about to, he shudders into the next room, so... Be careful here. We need to clear this mob quite quickly. Luckily for us, we weakened it enough. We can now switch the felling axe. Feel the final kiss of death. Grabbing our arrows and some loot. We do open this portal just in case things get a little dicey. But it's not the portal I'm really interested in taking. This feels like too easy an option. And Fredrin is not here for handouts. The stranger has wronged him. He will try his best to seek revenge. Skirting away into the center of the circle. This room can be quite annoying as you end up pulling a ton of mobs if you run through the center of it. We're actually going to try to find a way around. And once again, we find a ton of portals. Really blue portals everywhere as we hear another one spawn. So I'm not sure if they increase how many blue portals there are in ruins, but it feels like for some reason there's a pile of them. Like, a lot. No real kills in the kill feed, it's all portals. It's strange. Here's the fighting commotion close by, so we need to get, get ourselves in a position to make the most of it. We start trying to land some arrows on those pesky rangers. Fortunately, this crossbow skelly is keeping us at bay. It's going to take a little bit more time than I would have liked. Being a ranger close by, we're going to do what we can to push this guy in hopes of landing another beautiful felling axe sweep to the face. It is a very satisfying kill if you can make it work. Landing one shot on this ranger, he's popping his snacks, which means our arrow basically did nothing. We're now in a bit of a bow off. Fortunately for this guy, he, he chose that door, which led him away. As this zone's starting to pull in, all the portals are near my location, so... I have one opened up and run to, but, um, we get one quite close by here, and it's gonna be very tight. Very, very tight to see who makes it alive here. I do not know if that range is going to or not. But sure enough, Ranger Boy is still there, and of course... Of course, he has some sort of milk name. Hmm. Ironic. Can't milk this mummy. Weird. Perhaps he is a stream watcher, who knows. But, jumping back into our into our merchant's menu, we're gonna sell everything we found, which wasn't really that amazing, but we did get, we did get a bit of exciting PvP dealing with those players with Felling Axe. Once again, Felling Axe has been pretty solid. It's not... I've never felt like the Felling Axe was a bad weapon, it just felt like there was always weapons that were slightly more advantageous to use, such as Viking Sword, Lantern Combo if you're going to run someone down, or War Maul for Armor Pen. That being said, there was an era, not that long ago, during Playtest 3 and Playtest 4, where Felling Axe reigned supreme for a long time. And it was a very, very feared weapon for quite a number of playtests with Achilles Strike, now you have Blood Exchange, which also saw another slight change to it. But in general, most people would consider Felling Axe a true barbarian weapon. That being said, Fredrin, this human fighter, wields it with great, great ease and honor. He's not a weak individual. And so far, he's made his town and himself quite proud of the work he's accomplished. Dealing with, you know, the odd player using Felling Axe feels pretty good, and... I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't feel as bad as I thought it would. That movement speed bonus, or basically addition, it's been a very, very nice change to this weapon, even though I didn't think it was that horrible of a weapon before. Not sure if that is gonna be what pushes it over the edge, and you do get, you do get a small damage penalty while using it because of weapon mastery, but there's no other class that has adrenaline rush, or a second win for that matter. Which I think are both pretty solid perks when trying out new weapons. 
Speaking of second wind, we're going to take a campfire with us because we're going into HR ruins. Well, there's a lot of meds to make sure we can get second wind back. Second wind is actually better than it ever, has ever been for a solo player. So, comboing that with Adrenaline Rush is basically the only, only real damage option you have. Even though it's not really just true flat easy damage, you do need to land hits. I feel like it is a very strong or at least more solid option than I was expecting. Spelling Axe to this point has been pretty fun to use. And now, it looks like we have a wizard and a barbarian also to deal with. This barbarian's going with the classic War Maul and Viking Sword as I suggested. And this is my first ever Ruins HR. This will be an interesting experience. Guessing there'll be a lot more nightmare mobs or at least red skeletons as you're already seeing. Something we need to be very careful of. Some of the mob density in ruins can be a little, a little frustrating with just how many skeletons can be in certain rooms, but I've played this map enough to know there's a few, a few areas you can kind of navigate through without pulling the entire room. So that is handy information. Do a quick little look around. It is always odd starting in the middle of the map because you feel like you don't have anywhere to really work towards. And really, I don't want to be caught fighting mobs in a white kit this early on. There are definitely teams out there with, as you saw in the pregame lobby, really, really strong gear. Dealing with this mob, we are going to make the most of the shrine and hopefully these crates, as they will likely provide something fairly valuable, if not something we can wear. We're going to prioritize items we can maybe gear up on, or barrels or crates we can gear up on. Of course, we get a purple Barbuda, which has knowledge and additional magic damage. Fortunately, those do absolutely nothing for fighter or barbarian, so nearly, nearly got an amazing item. And as always, crates pay out with a blue item we can sell. And really a purple, a purple helmet is not a bad, a bad discovery. I'm, I'm very, very curious to see how much it could sell for. Surgical kit, another blue item. And now our inventory is already looking a little too full. Looting another chest, we end up finding some blue Francesca axes. Pretty solid upgrade. These do count towards uh, the blue weapon mastery quest where you have to find weapons of blue value. So Francesca's and I think throwing knives also. Uh, account. So that is very, very helpful. That information has been floating around the Discord, but if you haven't seen it already, make sure you do not sell those or use them if you don't have to. It will make your life a little easier when questing. You want to check what these heavy boots have to offer as... I sort of realized recently heavy boots now have strength. Those are plus two strength, plus two vigor heavy boots. I have an interesting option. Not very likely that I'll wear them because I do have green light foot, so... Not too interested in keeping them. I deal with these little bugs. They must always harass you as you walk across this bridge. This is not really a spot I, I should be in as a solo player. I'm out in the middle of a very, very popular bridge. Just asking for trouble. Breaking crates. Sure enough, Dark Book flies to the air trying to kill our woodsman, Fredrin. He is looting another barrel. We get tagged by one. We ready our bow, hoping to respond. He seems to just like disappeared into the lower section. We see him returning, so this could be an opportunity to do some chip damage to this warlock before they start pushing us, but it seems we're already out of time for that. And now I hear another team close by. Hey dude, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. It looks like these guys are these guys are interested in fighting the same magic wielding team. We're gonna do our best to lance some arrows as quickly as possible, hoping to catch either of these players by surprise. They will be a very very difficult team to face with our close range spelling axe. Looks like we tagged that warlock once. We'll likely tagged him again. Now this is very much a range duel versus classes. They don't have exceptional range. 
If I get hit by an ice bolt, I'd be very disappointed at this range as you can basically just sidestep it. Even more disappointing as we get clipped by the skeleton through the wall, bringing us down to half HP. We must now surge kit and avoid that fight, even though we had some decent pressure on those guys and they're fighting that other team. Unfortunate timing, but uh, that's just what mobs will do. I'm assuming there's some red skeletons up there that I'm not going to have time to clear that quickly. We're going to rat our way around the bottom here just for the time being to see how this all shakes out. Find some blue items again. It's kind of nice. Like I said, they're very fairly valuable now. Hoping to skirt up around this edge without drawing any mobs, and you'll see. You'll see, this guy is looking for me every chance he gets. He is quite interested in this solo fighter. Fredrin is taking it slow. Fredrin is a very proud man, but not a complete idiot. He knows when the danger is not really worth the risk. So, we're going to chill here for a sec. We do hear steps just above us. They are scoping out that little peak hole again. Now we hear nothing. And we also need to get moving because zone is fast approaching. We do not have too much time to linger in the shadows, waiting for the right moment. We're just going to have to hope they don't hear us as we cross the courtyard and up these stairs into the rooms beyond. I also need to find a decent direction that doesn't lead me into a pile of mobs as that could, that could lead to my death quite quickly. See the players again. Just punish them with another arrow, but of course they move at the last second. It looks like once again they're dealing with another team. We do tag the wizard again. Just annoy them a little bit further. Just sling a few more arrows and then get on our way. This is not a situation I want to be walking into with my sprintless fighter. My arms may be strong as steel, but my legs are not the quickest. They're not that fleet of foot. We need to deal with these mobs as fast as possible in order to get out of here without taking too much damage. Doing this in the darkness with a felling axe is a little tricky. Of course, we take more mob damage. We do have a campfire, so we can make the most of that. Even if zone starts to push, push yourself into the into the center of this map. Unfortunately, once again, we take another another swing from that mob, which is gonna make this campfire a lot less effective. Would have almost would have likely filled our HP bar, and maybe could have just topped it off with a potion. Now we're also missing adrenaline spike for a minute, and this campfire is not gonna bring us back to full HP. Here's some fighting and some intense fighting and something I really want to be a part of. That mob hit really slowed us down. Of course, half HP. A lot different than full HP. Or even close to 80% HP. It's like one, one Warlock spell or a good zap pretty much do us in. Fearing through the darkness, we do everything we can to spot the attackers or our foes. We try to get this felling axe into range where Frederick can show his worth. Your player's close and they definitely see me, and now we're, we have a barbarian chasing us, and it sounds like I just heard a spear as well. Maybe a halberd. Now we have two, two new players to deal with. do everything we can to try to try to land an arrow in this incredible dark area. Once again, our HP starts ticking away. Switching to a potion, we're going to need to chug this to get some of our HP taken back. As we're getting fairly camped and zoned out here by these two players. See them darting around every now and again, and I'm pretty sure they're on the other side of this wall. We're going to pop second wind and try to engage a little bit of fight. Missing our headshot on the Barbarian was crucial. We're just going to lean into this 
Telling Axe as much as possible. Running two headshots on this Warlock does him in. And now we have to kill this guy as quickly as possible without taking any hits. Smartly, he switches the Viking Sword. We miss our Francisca Axe. And Fredrin bites the dust. Fortunately for him, could not could not get enough spacing or really have enough HP to get ourselves in a good situation. With zone fast approaching, I feel like I needed to take that fight on. And I had a decent 1v1 opportunity where I felt like felt like I could have blown up that barbarian when he had his warm all out. However, once I saw the warlock on my back, we switched targets immediately. It kind of led to a chaotic chaotic few moments where I just didn't have didn't have enough HP or enough distance to get away from this guy as he's going agi pants, no shirt. So, sprint. Sprint in that situation likely would have been burned earlier. Don't mind having adrenaline rush. It really does help cleave through a target quickly. But let me know what you think with the recent changes to the Falling Axe. Do you think it's an item people should be using or a weapon people should be using on fighter? Or maybe it's just better left on Barbarian. I'm not going to lie to you. I had a lot of fun using it here. And I felt like I had a lot of potential to win these fights if I'd done something a little differently. This was more of just me not doing everything perfectly well. We did manage to take out a fairly geared player with our white telling out, so thank you all. I appreciate you, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Cheers.